until now, the most affordable Maserati Levante you could buy was a turbo diesel, 140k. Only problem with that is that it was a, a diesel and it sounded like a garbage truck, not a Maserati at all. But at the end of 2017, the very Maserati sounding Levante S came along. It had a three litre twin turbo petrol V6 made by Ferrari. But that was 170k. Now that's arrived. It's the new entry level Levante, simply called the Levante. And it's got the same V6 petrol made by Ferrari. And it's only 125k. So what's missing then? Horsepower, horsepower, that's the only difference, really, pretty much. See, the Levante and Levante S have got the same standard features. They've got the same three litre twin turbo V6 that's designed by Maserati and built by Ferrari. The thing is the Levante has got less power. It's got 59 kilowatts less power at 257 kilowatts. It's also got 80 Newton meters less torque, 500 Newton meters of torque all up. So does it really make a difference? Not much. Okay, so when I say not much, I mean, well, really the difference is 0.8 of a second. Zero to 100 in the Levante, the standard stock base entry car Levante, is six seconds. In the Levante S, it's 5.2. Now, there are some mechanical differences as well brakes, tyres are different in the Levante S to cope with the extra grunt but the air suspension which returns a really lovely ride so compliant, so composed and also can be firmed up with that suspension button there is fantastic and that's the same in the Levante S as well. Top speeds differ slightly as well. The the Levante S has a top speed of 264 kilometers per hour. Levante is not far behind it with 251. Now, like the Levante S, the Levante has that amazing engine note. Listen to that! That is magnificent! There are not many SUVs that sound this good. <laughs> yes. Now, it's not synthesized either. Yes, there is some exhaust pipe instrumentation going on, but it's not fake sound. Also shared with the Levante S is the same electric steering. Yeah, it does feel a little bit weird straight off top dead center. It turns in a little bit too quickly and you feel yourself having to sort of overcorrect it a little bit. I don't like that. Like the S, the Levante uses an eight speed auto. It's a little bit slow, but it's, oh God, it makes up for it by being smoother than butter. It's beautiful. The Levante weighs the same as the Levante S, and at 2.1 tonnes, that's pretty fat, but it's distributed 50-50 for perfect balance. It's a great chassis. It feels so planted and firm. Now, it's not a Jeep, okay? It's not a Jeep underneath. Yes, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles also owns Jeep, which owns Alfa Romeo as well, it, but it's not, this is not, there's not a Jeep underneath this. In fact, it's a Ghibli. It's a Maserati Ghibli platform underneath this, and that's a fantastic chassis. Now, all Levantes are all-wheel drive. It sends, when you're just cruising along, most of it goes to the rear wheels. But as soon as you start getting into some twisty bits, it keeps the traction near to perfect by sending it to the front when it needs to, or distributing wherever it needs to go to. And that just makes this car even more adept, I reckon. Now, one of my favorite things about the Levante is this button right here. It's the sport button. And when you press it, it changes the exhaust note. So it's angry sounding. It quickens up the steering. 
But the one thing it doesn't do is firm up the suspension. So you can do laps of Ligon Street or of Norton Street or whatever street happens to be your local blocky street sounding magnificent without that bone crushing ride. Now if you do want a bone crushing ride, that, there's, there's a button for that as well. It's right there. You press that, it's got a picture of a shock absorber on it. And that firms up the suspension as well. That puts the sport suspension in. And it's a little bit firmer. Not, not crazy firm. I wouldn't drive around like that all of the time, but it definitely improves your handling noticeably. Now, if you want to find out how I get to the score at the end, just go to carsguide.com.au to read the full review. And hey, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe. You know, you want it, don't you? Yeah. You know how I said it wasn't a Jeep underneath? Well, it's not a Jeep underneath, but in some ways it's a bit of a Jeep on the surface. You see, these are straight off a Jeep, the stop start button and the light button. And so are these, the switch gear for the windows. And so are these, the climate control knobs. I'm not very happy with that. That screen also has my Jeep sense tingling. It's an 8.4 inch screen and like the Levante S, it's also standard in this entry grade. And so is the sat nav and the digital radio and the excellent Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Also standard is the dual zone climate control, heated and power front seats and proximity unlocking. Now, if you want a sunroof, you're gonna to have to option it on the Levante entry car. It's standard on the S. That's one of the only differences in the standard features between the cars. The car I've been driving is fitted with what's called the Grand Sport Package and it costs, wait for it, $35,000 and what it adds is a more aggro body kit with matte black bits plus a sportier interior. The other pack costs the same amount of money and it's called the Grand Luso and it luxuries things up a lot with an exterior with chrome elements and silk upholstery on the interior. Frankly, the Levante without those packs is perfectly fine. Actually. It's, it's not perfectly fine, it's, it's really only just fine because even with these packs, the interior just isn't perfect at all. It's just not special enough for a Maserati, I reckon, particularly with those Jeep bits. i tell you what I'm not also very happy about, and that is legroom. Check out this, I'm 191 centimeters tall and that's in my driving position and I really can only just fit behind it. Headroom is getting pretty limited there as well. Also not enormous is the boot. Seriously, Maserati could probably do better than that. But I do love the styling. Look at these lines. I mean, how could you not love that face? It looks like it wants to eat you. If only the interior was just as special. But now at 125K, maybe you're able to overlook that.